Hi, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today we will be talking about this topic called as white blood cells. White blood cells are an important component of our blood and it is very important to know the morphology of each of these WBCs. How do they look like? Which are the conditions where they increase? When do they reduce? What is the normal count? So that is what we are going to deal with in today's class. So starting with the WBC that is predominant in the adult population. Any guesses? Yes, it is the neutrophil. This neutrophil is also called as segmented neutrophil. And how do we identify them? We look at the nucleus. In the nucleus, we can see that there are lobes. There can be two to five lobes and they are connected by thin nuclear filament as you can see over here where the laser is pointing. So these lobes are usually three to four in number in predominance of the neutrophils in our blood. But you can also see those with five and two. The chromatin appears condensed and it is deep purple black. And the cytoplasm will be pinkish to clear color as you can see in the image. There will be few fine granules which are of varying sizes which will appear pinkish to tan in color. The size of neutrophil is 9 to 15 micro, micrometer. We go to the next part that is what we discuss what is absolute neutrophilia or neutrophilic leukocytosis. Absolute neutrophilia or neutrophilic leukocytosis is called when absolute concentration of neutrophils are above normal for age. I have taken the values of DC that is greater than 7000 cells per cubic millimeter. So this values can change for each laboratory based on the population in that surrounding area. So if it is greater than 7000 cells per cubic millimeter, it is called as absolute neutrophilia or neutrophilic leukocytosis. Let's see what are few of these conditions that cause absolute neutrophilia. They can be acute inflammatory conditions like vasculitis, collagen vascular diseases, Acute infectious causes because of few bacterial infections, some viral infections, fungal infections, parasitic infections. They can also occur because of drugs, toxins, metabolic causes like ketoacidosis. And then tissue necrosis can also cause absolute neutrophilia. The causes include burns, trauma, myocardial infarction, hemolysis. And then there are few physiologic causes which you may have learnt in physiology like stress, exercise, smoking, pregnancy. All this can increase the neutrophils. And lastly, the neoplastic causes which could be carcinoma, sarcoma, myeloproliferative disorders. So in these conditions, we see absolute neutrophilia. Absolute neutropenia is a reduction of absolute neutrophil count below normal, normal for age. Now, this can also vary with laboratory, but we take the value of 2000 cells per cubic millimeter. Sometimes some laboratories take 2500, just like absolute neutrophilia also they take as 7500. So this can vary. Now what are the causes of absolute neutropenia? This also has various causes, right from drugs. Now, drugs can be chemotherapeutic drugs or anticonvulsants, chloramphenicol, antibiotics, benzodiazepines, antithyroids, etc. Then it can also be caused by radiation. It can be caused by toxins like alcohol, benzene compounds. It can also be caused by megaloblastic anemia. These are hematologic causes. Other than this, even myelodysplasia, marrow failure, marrow replacement, all this can cause neutrophils to go down. Infection, infections can also cause neutropenia sometimes. 
and then uh, there are causes like starvation and hyperspleenism which can result in absolute neutropenia we go to the next uh, wbc that is eosinophil so this is one uh, wbc which everyone finds very easy to identify because they have got orange granules so the nucleus usually has two lobes which are connected like by a thin filament usually it looks like a spectacles but sometimes it can have two or three lobes as well the cytoplasm will be filled with reddish orange spherical granules which are uniform in size the size of this eosinophil is 12 to 15 micrometer now eosinophilia is called when absolute eosinophil count is greater than 500 cells per cubic millimeter they can be divided into mild moderate and severe so if there are greater than 500 cells per cubic millimeter that is absolute eosinophil count of greater than 500 to 1500 it is called as mild eosinophilia if it is moderate then it will be 1500 to 5000 if it is severe then it will be greater than 5000 absolute eosinophil count so what are the causes of eosinophilia they vary from allergic like urticaria hay fever asthma to parasitic because of this microfilaria filariasis or respiratory diseases like loeffler syndrome and Churg-Straw syndrome inflammatory like eosinophilic fasciitis and neoplastic again myeloproliferative neoplasms Hodgkin lymphomas t-cell lymphomas we then go to basophils so what we have done is we have chosen the ones which have got these prominent granules so it's called as granular leukocytes in the first three that is neutrophil and eosinophil and basophil so the size of basophil is 10 to 15 micrometer and this is very rarely seen in our day-to-day -day practice but if we search properly we will get at least one basophil in one day so the nucleus is segmented but usually we can't make out because there are these purple granules which obscure the background of the cytoplasm and nucleus we can't make out the morphology properly it will be something like this there'll be a lot of purple granules so this is the event we call basophilia when there is an increase in the absolute basophil count above 100 cells per cubic millimeter or 0.1 into 10 to the power 9 per liter according to DC. So the causes include myeloproliferative disease, allergic food or drugs, infectious like varicella infection, chronic hemolytic anemia, particularly after the splenectomy, and inflammatory causes like collagen vascular disease. Next we go to monocyte. How does monocyte look like? The monocyte nucleus will be in the form of horseshoe shaped or bean shaped. You can see that indentation over here, right? And the chromatin will be loose form, also forming lacy pattern. And the cytoplasm will be bluish gray. If you compare this with the lymphocyte, you will know the difference of the chromatin. The average size is 18 micrometers and when do we call this monocytosis when it is increased above the upper reference value that is more than 1000 cells per cubic millimeter. The causes can be infectious because of tuberculosis, subacute bacterial endocarditis, hematologic like leukemias, myeloproliferative neoplasms, lymphomas, multiple myelomas or when the patient is recovering from neutropenia or inflammatory like collagen vascular disease, polyarthritis or other solid tumors. Finally, we come to small lymphocyte. How do you identify the small lymphocyte? Its average size is 7 to 10 micrometers and the nucleus is about the size of an RBC and occupies about 90% of the cell area. And the chromatin will be deeply condensed and stains dark purple. When you saw that monocyte, it was open. Here it is deeply condensed and it is trunk type. And you can see that there is a 
thin rim of cytoplasm can you see something palely stained over here that is that sky blue cytoplasm that is a narrow rim this is how you identify the small lymphocyte and sometimes you know that uh, how do we classify rbc's as microcytic macrocytic normocytic based on comparison with the nucleus of the small lymphocyte so if it is larger than the nucleus of the small lymphocyte then we call it as macrocytic if it is smaller then it is microcytic if it is equivalent it is normocytic so lymphocytosis is increase in the number of lymphocytes in the peripheral blood that is absolute lymphocytosis according to dc it is around 3000 cells per cubic millimeter it differs from lab to lab so infectious causes which cause infectious lymphocytosis could be viral tuberculosis toxoplasmosis rickettsial well chronic inflammatory could be ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease immune mediated can be drug sensitivity and vasculitis hematologic like all cll lymphoma and stress like acute and transient so these are the various wbcs that you need to know i hope you have understood the morphology part of it and the causes that are very important and in your day to day practice you should know what is followed in your laboratory what are the normal counts and when are they called increase and reduced these are most common viva questions for post graduates so if you like this video do press the like button and share it with your friends and do subscribe to our channel if you want more such videos this is dr susan signing out until we meet in the next video